A curved or phased array transducer with an OB exam type is used to perform a transabdominal examination of an intrauterine pregnancy to determine fetal weight and age by measuring biparietal diameter, head and abdominal circumference, and femur length. It is helpful for the patients to have a full bladder to complete this examination. The transducer is placed in a longitudinal orientation in the midline at the level of the symphysis pubis. The orientation marker is directed toward the patient's head. The transducer is angled below the pubic symphysis into the pelvis to visualize the bladder that appears as a hypoechoic triangular structure. The transducer is then rotated to a transverse orientation with the orientation marker directed to the patient's right to perform a systematic fetal survey to identify the fetal structures. After identifying the fetal head, the transducer is moved to obtain a cross-section of the fetal skull at the level where the falx cerebri is midline. The thalami is symmetrically positioned on either side of the falx and the cavum septum pellucidum is seen in the distal third of the fronto-occipital diameter, giving you an oval, symmetrically positioned skull. The biparietal diameter is measured at the greatest width of the fetal head in an ear-to-ear -ear fashion by placing the calipers from the outer edge of the proximal parietal bone to the inner edge of the distal parietal bone. From this scan plane, a head circumference can be measured by placing the distal caliper to the outer edge of the distal skull and employing the ellipse feature around the outside of the skull bone echoes to approximate the shape of the skull. The transducer is then slid along the transverse fetal spine to identify the fetal abdomen at its greatest width at the level of the transverse abdominal triad. Here, the hypoechoic fluid-filled stomach is seen on the left side of the abdomen. The hypoechoic umbilical vein and the left portal vein meet within the liver on the right, and the three hyperechoic bones of the transverse spine are seen within the same axial plane. The abdominal circumference measurement is measured in late pregnancy to reflect fetal size and weight rather than age and is done by placing calipers on the outer skin surface of the circular abdomen and employing the ellipse measurement feature. The femur length measurements are performed by sliding the transducer caudally along the fetal spine and pelvis and then angling off to image the hyperechoic diaphysis of the femur longitudinally. By placing the most anterior femur horizontal to the ultrasound beam, the calipers should be placed at the ends of the bony diaphysis and exclude the greater trochanter, the distal femoral epiphysis, or any triangular spur artifacts that can falsely increase femur length <coughs> measurements. And femur length. Sonographic head measurements are obtained in the transthalamic view. This sonographic view is an axial or transverse image of the fetal head. The thalami and cavum septum pellucidum are important landmarks in this view. The biparietal diameter is measured perpendicular to the sagittal <coughs> midline, from the outer edge of the skull in the upper or near field to the inner edge of the skull in the lower or far field. The head circumference is measured by placing an ellipse around the outer edge of the skull. The cephalic index is the biparietal diameter divided by the occipitofrontal diameter times 100. The occipitofrontal diameter is measured from the occiput to the frontal bone. A normal cephalic index is 78% plus or minus 8%. A cephalic index below the normal range indicates dolicocephaly, shown here. Dolicocephaly may be a normal variant or may be observed in the setting of a central nervous system abnormality, such as spina bifida, a craniofacial abnormality, such as craniosynostosis, or may be positional due to oligohydramnios or breach presentation. With dolicocephaly, only the head circumference, abdominal circumference, and femur length should be used to calculate gestational age. A cephalic index above the normal range indicates brachycephaly, an unusually rounded head. 
Brachycephaly may be a normal variant. It is also common with Down syndrome, and it may occur secondary to a craniofacial abnormality or may be positional. The abdominal circumference is measured in a transverse plane in the mid-abdomen. Here, both sonographic and schematic images are seen. Sonographically, the abdominal circumference is measured at the level of the stomach and the confluence of the umbilical vein with the right portal vein and appears as a J-shaped structure. If the fetal abdomen is divided into four equal sections, the umbilical vein should appear in the second portion only. Ideally, one rib is visible on each side to indicate that the image was not taken at an oblique angle. The abdominal circumference is measured by placing an ellipse around the outer border of the skin. This parameter varies more than either the head or femur measurements and is most affected by fetal growth. In addition to the fetal stomach and umbilical vein, several other anatomic structures are visible in this view. Three ossification centers represent the vertebral body anteriorly and the junction of the vertebral laminae and pedicles posteriorly. Ideally, only one rib is visible on each side of the abdomen, indicating that the image was not taken at an oblique angle. The femur is measured along its shaft as shown here. The femur length is measured from diaphysis to diaphysis along the long axis of the shaft. Only the femur's ossified portions are measured. The ratio of femur length to abdominal circumference normally ranges from 20 to 24%. If the ratio is below 18%, this may indicate a skeletal dysplasia and a ratio below 16% in the setting of other skeletal abnormalities suggests a lethal skeletal dysplasia. In this 21-week fetus with a lethal skeletal dysplasia, the ratio measured below 10%.